do you do if to save the plant, to save the biosphere from being destroyed at a niveau global, and in order to prevent this, the, the, the parts of the planet who have benefited are going to have to give up something good. And that was the genesis of the novel. C'est mieux comme ça en France, en anglais, I don't know. Je parle français, je parle anglais, je parle mélange, je mélange, c'est moi. Les deux, c'est bien. Les Mélange, anglais, français. Non, non, non. Tout, tout le monde. D'accord. Ah, ok. Allemand, non. <rire> ça, on, on le voit bien, il y a, il y a une empreinte euh, sur, évidemment, l'actualité, sur l'actualité écologique, et souvent vos romans traite de la société ou de fait de société, on, on se rappelle de Jacques Baron, des, des choses comme ça. Est-ce que la science-fiction, pour vous, c'est vraiment un moyen de parler du monde et des thématiques d'actualité Je ne suis pas sûr que je la question, mais ce que j'ai toujours dit, c'est que la technologie en elle-même est morale et neutrale. C'est ce que nous faisons avec la technologie que is the moral question. Um, and I think um, to the extent that I'm dealing with a technology that doesn't exist or technology that does exist but has a, an effect on, 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 on culture or the planet, that's the source of drama, really, because the best drama I think either on a, a nouveau personnel or, 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 or a political or cultural level is not the conflict between good and evil, but the conflict between different concepts of what is good. Uh, and I think that informs a, a, a lot of my a lot of my stuff. Um, and a lot of literature in general that's, that's really any good. Juste, je fais une parenthèse là-dessus. Votre dernier livre s'appelle Le Temps du Grève, euh, qui est, il est paru il y a un an à peu près. Là, on est plus sur la thématique de la réalité virtuelle. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire un petit mot sur, sur ce livre-là Je pense que j'ai fait ça avant quelqu'un d'autre, trois fois. J'ai inventé l'Internet avant Al Gore way before Al Gore, in, uh, uh, well, the title of the book in English was The World Between. Uh, Francais say, La Grande Guerre de Bleu et de Rose, and, and other shows come ça. Uh, the idée de, uh, well, de l'internet lui-même, le web, and I think I called it that, and a democracy uh, electronique, avec le, le les deux parts de le Parlement, un c'est les choses conventionnelles, et l'autre c'est euh, le public lui-même euh, dans, euh, ah, dans le web, dans l'Internet, et ça c'est une chose comme ça. Mais en avance de ça, j'ai écrit euh, un, un petit roman, une grande nouvelle, euh, what the hell is it? Uh, en anglais, euh, oh. Riding the Torch, and Francais Les Avaliers de Vide. And in that, c'est un, un, un appareil qui était implanté direct dans le cerveau, qui donnait toutes les personnes dans cette euh, société, même en connexion de tout le toutes les choses de, de le pass, comme euh, un super Google, <rire> ou même euh, Wikipédia, ou des choses comme ça. Et à l'autre côté, la possibilité d'entrer dans le sensorium d'une autre personne. Pas, pour la plupart de mes noms, Reality virtuelle, c'est quoi C'est la vision et le son, et ça c'est tout. Un oh, oh, peu de motion, des choses comme ça. Mais on, 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 dans euh, les ablés de vide, avec le truc qui était implanté directement dans le cerveau, 
Uh, vous avez aussi tous les autres sens, de, de goût, de pression, des choses comme ça. Et vous avez la possibilité de, 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 trans, de, de transporter votre conscience dans un corps d'une autre personne. Et ça, c'était 70. 60 quoi hein? 70 ou comme ça. Uh, long in advance de Al Gore. <laughs> C'est un blog, mais. Mais, mais pas un blog, totalement un blog. Uh, um, parce qu'Al Gore, dans cette université, il fait le fric pour de la créer uh, un, uh, un programme. Algorithms is it on drum kit. <laughs> Algorithm well uh, that's uh, algorithms maybe is funny in, in, in English, it doesn't make too much sense in French. Um, but he, he really did that. He did not he admitted he invented the drum machine maybe, but not the internet. <laughs> Vous disiez qu'effectivement, vous aviez raconté Internet presque avant Internet. Euh, Est-ce qu'il y a une partie visionnaire dans, dans ce que vous faites sur le futur Est-ce que vous, vous pensez comme ça Well, I mean, that's what you're doing if, if you're writing science fiction or anything like it, which I prefer to call speculative fiction, which is a, a broader definition. Because the essence of speculative fiction or science fiction is it has to be, a, there has to be an element in it that doesn't exist but could exist. So you really have to, it has to be set in the near future, the immediate future, or, 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 or the far future. It really can't be set in the past and it really can't be set in the present. So in, in that sense, in the hardware sense, Uh, in a technological sense, I think, you know, it, you, you, you have to be visionary about it or you can't write this sort of thing, you just can't. Um, but... En anglais, visionnaire, c'est quelque chose, c'est un visionnaire littéral, c'est en vous le... vous avez en... En quoi En vision d'une chose à la future. Euh, une chose concrète, euh, technologie, euh, un changement politique, quelque chose comme ça. Mais, but in English, peut-être aussi en français, it also can mean um, a kind of idea of Visionary consciousness. A vision de la conscience humaine qui est qui change. Peut-être primarily positive. Ça c'est visionnaire. Si c'est une dévolution, ça c'est pas visionnaire. Ça c'est rétro. Or shows come so. So I think the first part about the technology and things like that, I don't think that's at all unique with me because I don't think you can write speculative fiction or science fiction without doing that. But all, not, a lot of science fiction or speculative fiction does somehow not have that uh, visionary uh, consciousness uh, and, and doesn't necessarily require that to, to, to be real science fiction. Um, a lot of it doesn't. A lot of it doesn't. Every, if you look at the movies, all of them don't, most of them. What is, I, I, we were on an airplane coming from New York, we saw the new Star Trek, Let me see, Star Trek, uh, the new Superman, and some other thing with, with uh, I forget what it was called, but it didn't really matter what it was called, it was all the same thing. Explosions, people punching people, shooting them with guns, uh, stepping on their faces, and wall to wall. They didn't at least have, except for the Superman, I think, any car chases. 
uh, which was the fault of these two movies, because usually you have to have a car chase. Uh, so that stuff is science fiction of a coin. You can't disown it that way, but it really doesn't have a visionary um, um, element. It's that kind of science fiction is to the kind of speculative fiction I'm talking about as pornograph pornography is to erotic art, something like that. Um, it's a jerk off. <laughs> Vous avez souvent eu des, des, des romans qui ont, ont suscité au moins la discussion, euh, si ce n'est parfois la polémique. Hein. Alors moi j'ai vu pas mal de discussions justement passer sur, sur le temps du rêve, mais on se souvient que Jacques Baron ça a provoqué pas mal de, de discussions, mais le printemps russe aussi. Quand on est écrivain, susciter autant de débats comme ça, c'est un plaisir, vous voyez, le, que les gens s'interrogent, discutent de vos romans, parfois que ça les choque ou que ça les, que ça les interpelle. Un plaisir pourquoi pas, vous pourriez les faire pour moi. Well, pour moi, l'acte d'écrire, pour le coup, c'est un plaisir pour moi. C'est quelques écrivains qui disent Oh non, c'est dur, je travaille, c'est très dur, c'est triste, c'est nécessaire d'être triste. Ça, c'est pas pour moi. May I, if I understand the other part of your question, um, which is kind of complicated, um, and it's not possible to say this in English, I have this, je dis en français, l'idée de politique, le sens engagé, et politique politicienne, and autre chose. Um, in English, it's very hard to make that distinction. Um, so, je crois que je suis um, engagé comme un écrivain, mais aussi un citoyen d'un pays, de, de planète, de tout ça. Et ça, c'est un, 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 un métapolitique. Uh, mais pour écrire un, un roman, avec un niveau métapolitique, je pense que c'est nécessaire en descendre et d'un niveau imaginaire d'un pôle de politique, politicien, pour, pas pour euh, faire le support pour un parti spécifique, mais pour, pour imaginer un futur concret. Concret. Um, so it's, 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 It's a, difficult, it's, it's a difficult question to answer, and maybe I'm not the right person to answer it. Uh, some people might say, no, you're, you're, uh, you're, you know, you're an out-and-out -out anarchist, or you're an out-and-out -out communist, or, or, or whatever they might say this stuff is. Um, I have been called in public a communist by fascists. And I've been called a fascist by communists. Um, so, I don't, I think that's good, uh, but I don't think I'm the person exactly to answer this part of, of, of that question. Est-ce que quelque part c'est aussi pour ça que vous faites de la science-fiction, pour ce côté un peu engagé, dire des choses? I'm not sure I understand that either, uh, but, but I think that Well, uh, our friend Harlan Ellison, I have to say this in English, can't say this in French, has a little saying on his wall frame, I, I am an artist, I should be exempt from shit. Well, <laughs> he doesn't say you're not exempt from shit. Um, you would like to be, uh, but you're certainly not. Um, and I think, um, Unless there's really something wrong with you, that you know, that's my job. I mean, it, it's my, it's my vocation, it's my calling. But I think, just as a as, as a human being, uh, like any other human being, I have my responsibilities and necessities and visions 
just as a, a, a citizen. Um, and because of what I do for a living, um, I really can't quite divorce those two things. Well, I'll give you an example of what I mean. C'est un roman en direct, which is at 11 in English. Uh, en part de ça, c'est les terroristes qui ont capturé le nouvel lui-même uh, en petite station de télé. Et avec de veste, mais c'est une veste avec pas le, le bombe conventionnel, mais une espèce de dirty bomb. Uh, so that book, uh, I didn't hear anybody describe this thing. Uh, and I was saying, I was fighting with myself. Should I really write this? Um, should I really write this? How to, how to, in other words, this is a dirty bomb. It's a de bomb atomic, it's a bomb de, de plutonium, or chose comme ça. It's not possible to faire a grand explosion. But an explosion of X, Mtex, or nitroglycerin, or, 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 or shows conventional, like that, qui ont grand, uh, that, that makes a, a, a cloud of, of radioactive material that can poison a whole city. This thing can be made. I know how to make it myself. It's not that hard. Um, if you're willing to kill yourself doing it. Um, and I was, that was an example. Well. Should I write this thing? I should I, but, uh, um, should, and finally, well, I decided I need the money. Now, um, I decided that s since it was possible, somebody was going to say it sooner or later. So I did write it. Um, I don't know if I did the right thing or not. Uh, but nobody's used this bomb yet. Now everybody's talking about it. And everybody knows. Not everybody. Enough people know how to do it. Um, I wrote another, I wrote a, uh, a no novelette called The Big Flash. I don't know what that's called in French. Qu'est-ce que c'est ça en français? C'est un groupe de rock and roll qui était uh, in love with the, with the atomic bomb. And, they, and there's songs in it about brighter than a thousand suns and do it and, and um, and uh, I wrote this thing. I went to the Milford Conference in Pennsylvania with the house of Damon Knight. And he went out in the woods and he picked mushrooms and he wrote, do it, uh, like mushroom. To, and, and when I came in there, I was kind of horrified uh, because the, the idea of the novel was that the military uses the music to get people to want to use the bomb. And then at the same, very same time, and, and the thing was there too, the Jefferson Airplane had, a, had a, an album called The Crown of Creation, and it had the bomb on it in the same way. And this was a, a, a conference um, of writers and editors, and there was a debate about whether this thing should be published or not. Well, it was published. It was published. It's been published many times, and the bomb hasn't gone off yet. Um, I don't know. If, just, I don't know if this answers the question. It just opens it up. Uh, but that's really, you know, you have to. Sometimes you have to think about things like this. Um, so far, I can say, I think, well, maybe not, that I. You know, I've never made, I, that I always, yeah, okay, I'll write it. Um, and it's, I was going to say it was never a mistake. But, the format, the, the, the Jack, Bug Jack Barrett, the, the mission, ça c'est, je vente un format comme ça. Uh, and it was used, taken up, at least in America, by a bunch of really, unpleasant right-wing politicians to, to do that. So I suppose in some ways I'm responsible for Rush Limbaugh. And, um, well, I don't, 
feel res well, I don't feel res really responsible for Rush Limbaugh, but there were actual uh, Pat, Pat Buchanan, who ran for president, well, you know, followed the scenario. Um, and that was kind of disturbing. Except, all right, and I'll get off this topic with this, because it's something that Robert Heinlein said to me. Uh, you know, Charles Manson uh, had really been involved with Stranger in a Strange Land and all that. So I asked Heinlein about this. And I said, how do you feel about the Manson family and, and Stranger in a Strange Land and all that? And he said, the manufacturer takes no responsibility for misuse of the product. Um, and I guess that's the answer to this question. I said, but the timeline answered it for me, finally, I think. Maybe. Je rebondis sur Jacques Baron euh, et l'éternité. Est-ce que vous avez l'impression qu'on vit un petit peu dans le monde de Jacques Baron maintenant? Yeah, uh, uh, well, I mean, the, 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 the smartphone didn't exist. The video phone didn't exist. Um, all that exists now. Um, the kind of reality television like that, I more or less invented. Um, the politics, for, for a while, were different, but now they become more alike. Because in the book, the Republican Party becomes a smaller, crazy, right-wing, plutocratic, fascist party, uh, and that's what's happening. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, there's very little in there, it, it, and Jack Barron really, that's obsolete except a little bit, except a little bit of the technology. Uh, well, I, wait a minute, I invented the video, for, well, the, well, I didn't invent that, other people had it. But it wasn't a smartphone, you know, and you couldn't play Angry Birds on it or anything like that. But uh, yeah, I, I think uh, we've really come around to that. We've, and, and then uh, I met a guy, I can't remember his name, who was really trying to do the Freezer project to freeze people so they could live forever. Uh, what is, what, you remember what, you remember what that was called, Donna? They really, they really do it. They, uh, I, mean, I saw uh, uh, um, a documentary about this, supposedly, where they have Timothy Leary's head in liquid nitrogen, as well as the famous baseball player, Ted Williams. And it's the same thing. You pay money if you have money, and um, you'll go with, into cryogenic freezing, and maybe sometime in the future they, you know, um, revive you. And, uh, but Phil Dick wrote some really funny things stories about this. Yeah, they, they revive your consciousness, but you turn out to be the operating system of an elevator or a refrigerator or something. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I, I don't think there's anything in there that's obsolete. Um, the only thing in there that's obsolete, was obsolete in the book, and, and uh, it's becoming obsolete now, is the American Republican Party. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's truer now than it ever was. The ending remains to be seen, but um, yeah, the situation, there it is, there it is. Une petite question sur euh, votre inspiration. C'est vrai que vos livres sont souvent différents, entre Bleu comme une orange ou Printemps russe ou Jacques Baron, c'est très différent. Comment naissent un petit peu vos, vos idées euh, de romans No, I don't think I understand that in any language. Uh, Comme... Com Comment vous imaginez un petit peu euh, vos romans et comment vous vous dites tiens tel oh, sujet j'ai envie d'en faire un livre. Oh how do I do it? Um, it's a good question. Uh, um, I think the way I do it is I have a story I want to tell and I have to invent a context for it in the future or, 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 or something like that. And then I have to do research to see what makes sense um, from books. Um, and more, more recently, you know, from all the things on the internet that you can find. Uh, pictures, films, um, you know, it, 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 it's, it, it's a safe, you know, I've written two historical novels as well. 
the Druid King, which has not been published here because the movie was so terrible, um, and uh, Mexico, which is the story of the conquest, the true story of the conquest of Mexico by, by Cortez. And, you know, having done that, I realized that it's sort of the same thing. Uh, in one case, you have to do research to reconstruct uh, a society of past that really existed at the time, but you can't go there and walk around. Um, on the other hand, when you're creating, say, something like uh, Le Printemps Bruce, um, you have to do something of that, but then you have to imagine the word is, in English is extrapolate from what the present thing is, and then you invent, uh, and you try and be convincing. Um, so for me, it's almost always the story that, that comes first. The story is the, the dramatic aspect, characters, uh, what, I wanna, what I wanna write about, and then uh, I have to do the research to create the world in which it happens. I think every writer, every novelist, either does it, even, you know, for, for contemporary fiction too. Um, if I wanted to write, a, you know, if somebody wants to write a, a, a polar that takes place in, uh, in Nantes and the Utopials, they have to have been here or have read about it or seen it on television to know which, where the stairs go and where the food is and, and what's outside and so forth. Um, well, this is getting a, a little bit away from things, but I think there's a certain kind of um, so-called mainstream fiction which fails to do this and is therefore much weaker because of it. It's, it's too internalized inside the character and the world that the characters live in is, you know, generic and it's, it, it's, it's our world sort of um, and doesn't, and, and that kind of fiction even doesn't take into account the fact that, that any characters, any con their conscious, their, their very consciousness, their very existence is going to be partially determined by the world they live in in very specific and powerful ways. Um, and I think one of the reasons I write a lot, mostly science fiction, uh, is that. I think it's, 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 it's a complete fiction, whereas that other kind of stuff really isn't. Uh, I mean, I've written some contemporary, I, well, The Mirror de Spree, that's a contemporary novel, but you have to do the same thing. Um, and have I written any other contemporary? Well, I, I just, well, Something that hasn't been published at all yet has been is called the uh, Police State. It, it's set completely in New Orleans and a little bit in the rest of Louisiana. And we spent like three weeks there doing research for it after doing all the things you could do on the internet or reading books and stuff like that. Um, well, that's the answer. Je voudrais faire une petite parenthèse sur la nouvelle dans l'anthologie des Utopiales. Euh, qui raconte un peu le, le, un premier contact extraterrestre. Est-ce que vous vous en, vous en souvenez Vous pouvez nous dire un petit peu comment vous l'avez construite, imaginé Why did I write How did that write um, Well, I don't remember. Oh, I, oh yeah. Um, it was an Italian newspaper. I, uh, I forget which one. Uh, do you know, remember which one? Le Pubblico Sera. One of the big Italian newspapers uh, wanted a short story from me. Uh, I forget exactly, uh, or maybe it was that they wanted a first contact story or something like that. Yeah, and so that's how that started. And well, but also we're at the beginning of prehistory here, and that's all. Vous, vous avez, on parle beaucoup de science-fiction. Je voudrais savoir un peu quel est votre regard global sur la science-fiction. Aujourd'hui, comment est-ce que vous trouvez la, la SF d'aujourd'hui, que ce soit la vôtre ou celle d'autres auteurs? Glo global. Oui. <rire> um, well, um, je lis quelque chose en français. Uh, I read stuff in English. Uh, I read 
anything else I read, I'm reading from translation. Um, one thing I can say, c'est que le science fiction français est vachement plus grand, vachement plus profond dans les dernières, je ne sais pas, dessinées ou choses comme ça, comme when I, uh, when I, when I first came to France. Um, and I think there's as much, probably, if not more, really good uh, science fiction being written in French than in English uh, um, and being published. Um, I remember when I was first here, it was very hard for French writers to publish their science fiction at all. Now all that has changed, all that has changed, um, much for the better. Um, um, so I think science fiction has become more global, has become more global. Um, I mean, I do some. I've, I've done something that that because I have I have carte blanche with Asimov's magazine. The deal was if I'm going to write this column, nobody tells me what I can or I can't do. And I think three or four times I've reviewed books that that were, that, that, that were only in French, even though it was in American magazine. I just wanted to do it. And I, I thought it was important. The last one, of course, which was Red to Grow Up, Roland Wagner, a great novel. Um, and whether it ever gets into English, I don't know, but uh, it was a groundbreaking novel in a, in a transnational sense, and I thought um, I should review it, whether it was in English or not, if, as long as I could read French. Uh, for all I know, there are things like that that are only in Russian, or in Chinese, or I'm sure in Japanese, which doesn't get translated very much out of Japanese. Um, that uh, it's become a, it's become an international an international literature, and the domination of anglophone science fiction that existed, uh, you know, for fifty or sixty years doesn't exist anymore. Um, and it's curious you think about it that the big cleavage way back when in the beginning of science fiction between the kind of techno, one kind of technophilic science fiction and another more political kind of science fiction was between H.G. Wells in English and Jules Verne in French. Um, so I think, I, I, I feel more positive about, about the, the globalization of science fiction than I do about the globalization of the economy, which is a disaster, uh, and I feel more positive about world science fiction I do, I mean, in, in terms of all these different countries, uh, than, than I do about what's going on in the States, which is not good at all. Um, it's very retro and very commercial and, and, and I think that, you know, there's, there, there are still good writers, there's still some good books that are published. It's not, you know, it's like in a year, if there are 20 really good novels published, it's a good year. Uh, even if there are a thousand pieces of crap. The haystack gets bigger, but there are not fewer needles in it. But that makes it harder to find the needles. En, en, je l'ai dit tout à l'heure en, en préambule, vous venez souvent à Nantes. Euh, quelle relation vous avez particulièrement avec la France Pourquoi vous aimez venir chez nous <rire> yeah. Yeah. Um, I originally came to France. Well, I was the guest of honor at Metz, which is the first time I've been here. I met Richard Pinhas, became a, or actually met Richard in, in California, and I got involved in the actually being a singer on a record, um, gradually was visiting France, and always wanted to try living here. And then finally I got the idea for Russian Spring, which is mostly set in Paris, uh, and decided to write the book of, you know, come to, go live in France for nine months for a year to write the book, which did. Um, 
then, I don't know, two things happened. One was it became so much more interesting in Europe than it was in the States. Uh, as, I, I, as I always say, Europe is not just, for an American, uh, Europe is not just another planet, it's another solar system. You have the big planets, you have England, France, Italy, and so forth. You have little ones, smaller ones, maybe like moons, like Belgium, and uh, 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 Czech, uh, Czech, the Czech Republic, and so forth. And then you have some asteroids like San Marino and uh, Andorra and, and stuff like that. And all, and the wall was coming down. I walked through the wall while it was coming down. Literally, they were bashing it down with hammers, and they were trying to sell you hammers to hit the wall, but I had my own hammer. Actually, it was junk on the ground, so I just picked it up and walked through the Berlin Wall. Um, and also, I preferred living in France. Well, France particularly because I was, I had, by that time, I had a lot of friends here. Um, I was culturally connected. Um, France is in the center of Europe. Um, if you speak French, but you're francophone, you, you, you know, you get along in a lot of countries. Um, and, but I wrote a thing, I wrote a thing for uh, Le Monde called L'Exception Française. They asked me to write this. And what that was about was, you know, what the French, among other things, but this, it's, it, this is like a haiku version. Uh, they were arguing with the Americans about the GATT, you know, the, the treaty, the trade treaty, and the Americans were saying that the French subsidy of its, of, it, of, of its film industry violated free trade rules. And the French reaction to that was, get stuffed. Um, this is a patrimony. This is, is an art, and that transcends economy. And that is not the United States uh, at all, and that's the kind of thing that made me feel more culturally connected here than, than, than in America. Um, another thing, I think I, think I put it in, in, in the exception of Francaise, if an American writer Walks into a if 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 a if, 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 if a writer walks into a bank in France or in Italy, they're, they're you know they're an artist. The same writer walks into a bank in the States, they're they're an unemployed bum, a clochard of, of, of a certain sort. Um, so it's it's things like it, it's things like that. Um, and it's strange, but uh, I've always felt or came to feel. I mean, I'm not a French citizen or anything like that, uh, but, but I came to feel that I had more responsibilities of cultural citizenship here in, in, in France than I did in the States. I mean, I did things for the French Ministry of, I guess it was culture and education uh, in New Caledonia. I did things for the French Embassy in Mexico. These are nice trips, you know, but I feel that um, I've always felt that you know I guess I get to go to Nantes, get to go to Saint Malo, you know, all the all the good all the good stuff. But I felt that uh, I therefore owe the responsibility if I was asked to do something in a in a in a school in a bad neighborhood somewhere, uh, stuff like that, that that I had a responsibility to do that too. Uh, so it's it, it's that kind of connectedness, and then you know being here long enough, you develop friendships that last that that, that are lifelong friendships. Uh, we were just in um, in Lyon, and we had been there ten years ago. Uh, Donna was talking to a girl that was seven years old, and now she's a teenager, and they've got pictures of the ten years ago what we did there. Uh, we, I've, I've been coming myself to Utopias before it was, I, know, I think I'm not supposed to say this, but it's true, before it was in Nantes, when it was in Poitiers. Uh, and we, and Donor and I and my ex-wife, Lee, and myself, one way or another, 
I think they missed one, I missed one or two of these things. One, I was very sick, and I forget what the other reason was. Um, or I had to be someplace else or something like that. So I, I, I have very good friends here. I have friends spread out all over France. I started to realize that. You know, I, I, lived, I, I never lived outside of Paris, um, but I always traveled outside of Paris more than most Parisians, you know? Quand j'étais en Paris, je voudrais faire un voyage dans le sud de France. Elle a Paris, elle m'a dit, oh, elle n'a pas en vrai français, ça, 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 non, non, je ne comprends pas rien de tout là. Quand elle est sorte, elle me dit, oh, les Parisiens, ça, c'est pas de vrai français, ça, c'est un orgueil de les Parisiens, des choses comme ça. That there really is. France performed uh, in, in, a, in a certain sense. That it's a, as I was saying to somebody last night, you're talking about the politics, Hollande and all that, and, and, and Obama and, and whoever, uh, that's, you know, that are things better in France than they are in the States? Are things better in the States than they are in France? Well, the economic stuff, um, and the, you know, the specific political stuff, it comes and it goes. You have what? You have Giscard, you have Daniel Mitterrand, you have uh, Chirac, you have Sarkozy, you have Alain, you have uh, Harry Truman, you have, you know, you have, you have Ronald Reagan, you have Jimmy Carter, you have the two Bushes, you have Obama, you have Clinton. Uh, that's, that's, I'm not saying it's not important, but that's superficial in, in terms of what a, what a country really is, what, 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 what the culture is. And because this is a much older culture, uh, it's, it's much stronger and, and more pervasive here than it is in the States. Um, there's a Ray Bradbury story I always quote when I'm asked something like this. It's a very short story. The Russians have bombed America and, and, the, and, the, and the American tourists in Mexico are running up the road, it, you know, frantically, and it's still got two Mexicans at a, gas, at a petrol station. And one Mexican asks the tourist as he's filling up, um, what's going on? And he says, haven't you heard? Or the bomb the United States is the end of the world. And off the road he goes. And one Mexican looks at the other and says, what do they mean the world? Um, so I, I guess that's the answer to that. Uh, uh, you know, over time, I feel very culturally you know, connected here. It's not just the food and the cheap wine, because wine is so expensive in the States. It's, it's, it's horrible. Um, you can't believe how bad it is. I know you afford <laughs> something that you could buy for four euros here. It's going to cost you 14 euros there, and it's not going to travel well. It's going to be what we call in English plunk, you know, something you might get in a bed to back. Alors, vous l'avez compris, les conférences avec Norman Spinrad, elles pourraient durer trois heures, <rire> parce que c'est toujours très intéressant. On a plein de questions. Simplement, on a le temps pour une petite question dans le public. Si quelqu'un a une question pour Norman Spinrad. Non Alors moi je vais poser la dernière question. Okay. <rire> euh, sur quoi est-ce que vous travaillez actuellement Quel sera le thème de votre prochain roman Oh, well, the last novel I finished, well, I've written some novella and, and a few things like that, and put, was a thing called Police State, which will be published, I don't know, well, they just had an upheaval at Fayard, I don't know when what is being published, but uh, sometime in the spring called Police State which is not what you think, not what the title leads you to think it is. It's all set in, in Louisiana, mostly in New Orleans, and it's about how the police lead an anarchistic rebellion against, well, what happens is there's one cop who's been, you know, from the, from the bayou, from the, the, poor, the Ninth Ward, poor places, he's become a policeman, he's got a family, Everything's cool, he's got a house. 
uh, and but the police are, are being used to evict people from their houses uh, who, who can't pay their their rent, but who have guns, uh, like everybody else has guns in America. So they give him a piece of paper to say, you, uh, uh, go to this house and evict these people. He looks at it, it's his house. Uh -huh. And it sort of goes from there. How the police um, become a revolutionary force. Uh, only, in Louis, uh, only in Louisiana, maybe. Um, I've spent times in, in Louisiana before this. It's a very strange place. Uh, uh, it is so totally corrupt, and yet it's a kind of corruption that sort of works. Um, well, they did, um, this is sort of the spirit of this book, really. There was one of the usual legislature scandals that they always have in Louisiana. And then the television crew is going out, they're doing man, man on the street reviews. What do you think? about the, the, the state legislature. And one guy with that Louisiana look says, I don't see why everybody is complaining about our state legislature. We've got the best st state legislature money can buy. And that's Louisiana. And that's the book, sort of. It's, more, it's, got, it's, a, it's got voodoo in it and, and, and a lot of other things, but uh, that's, I never thought, I never thought I would end up writing a, uh, you know, a southern regional novel, but in a way, among other things, we stayed as that. It's, 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 this is my Louisiana book. I doubt if I'll write another one, um, and I doubt if I'll write another regional like that, but originally I was going to set this thing in, in California because I read about something like, and then somewhere I said, no, this is not California. This is definitely Louisiana. Et eh bien voilà, on arrive à la fin de cette table ronde. On m'a demandé de bien respecter le timing. Merci à Norman Spinran. Merci à vous. Restez là, il y a une conférence sur la pollution. Tout de suite. Merci à tous.